Beloved, welcome to yet another episode of our series on divination. I'm excited to see you again coming to tune into this program. I was watching from the beginning of our series up to today, our viewing seemed to be doing very well. So I need to express my gratitude to you for your viewing and for your sharing the pages on which this presentation is shared. I need to also say to you that we are on episode number four today, but this is not the last of our episodes. We are going to look at episode number five after this one. My invitation to you is that you must not miss episode number five. It is my intention in the fifth episode to deal with a very interesting Bible passage, which is the story or the narrative of the medium at Endo. It is my belief that this particular portion of scripture has caused a lot of confusion and a lot of talk among biblical believers and skeptics at the same time. So I need to deal with it in our fifth episode. But today our focus is on something completely different. And once again, I need to express my gratitude for your coming in and to also watch this program. As is our tradition before we begin, I want us to pause and have a conversation with the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Good Lord, thank you for the privilege of giving us yet again to come and to talk to you through the subject of divination. It is my prayer that you will bless us and that you illuminate our minds and draw us closer to you. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. We have said it before several times in our different episodes that divination takes different forms and different shapes. In our focus today, we are going to look at one that I believe appeals a lot to the African psyche. Different forms of divination appeal to different groups of people. But the one that we need to focus on today, in my understanding, is one that really directly appeals to the African side. In our focus today, we are going to look at the form of divination known as magic. Now, magic is practi practiced by sorcerers, by wizards, by witches, and different other forms of practitioners of divination. And normally people go to these magicians, these diviners, when there is a challenge. Today I'm going to try and just unpack this kind of divination called magic. Its forms, its practice, how it comes about, and for what reasons sometimes people visit to consult practitioners of magic. Reading during the week I realized that magic, among other forms of divination, is one of those types of divination that appeals a lot to the African psyche. What is magic? Magic is the art of causing a supernatural occurrence uh, using a supernatural acts or using the work or influence of a spirit. And magic, like I've said earlier, takes different forms and different types. What are some of the types of magic that we have? We have what is called contact and non-contact magic. Now, contact magic, uh, uh, and, and contact and non-contact magic. Now, non-contact magic uses a principle known as the principle of similarity. Let's deal first with non-contact magic. Non-contact magic is when an individual goes to a practitioner of magic seeking aid regarding an individual who is not necessarily present. For example, you have had a problem with someone that you consider an enemy, and then you go to an African medicine man, and then they request you to bring a photograph of this person that is causing you challenges. So a photograph is brought to this practitioner, this African medicine man, and then they act on the photograph, whatever it is that they want to take effect on that other individual. For example, they're bringing a new needle and then they prick the head on this photograph. And when they do that, the expectation is that the individual on the other end is supposed to suffer from head injuries, incisions, migraines, headaches that cannot be explained because of the act that has been done on the photograph. Sometimes they do not use photographs. They can use a mirror. Where you go to this practitioner, a mirror is put, and then you mention the name 
of the individual that you want them to act on. And then they call up the individual and his face or image appears on the photograph, on the, on the mirror. And whatever it is they do on that image in the mirror, consequently, must happen to the individual. For example, if they harm their heart, we expect that, that on the other end, harm must also then come to the individual who is represented by the image on the mirror. But they don't just use mirrors also. Sometimes they create what are called effigies. I think a simpler way of putting it across is to call them dolls, where someone makes a little doll out of uh, a maize cob, out of uh, pieces of cloth or cotton wool and, and things like that. And then they make an image that is to represent the particular individual that they want dealt with. Whatever harm is done to this particular image is also then expected to take effect on the person who is on the other hand. For example, say suppose they destroy the image, the understanding and the expectation is that that other person on the other hand, their life is supposed to be destroyed. So this is non-contact magic, which uses the principle of similarity, where something similar or something that represents that other individual is brought and acted on by the medicine man. But magic can also take a different form, which is called non-contact magic. Non-contact magic, which is called contact magic. Now, contact magic requires that you bring in something that has been in contact with that particular individual. What are some of the things that people bring? Sometimes they bring pieces of cloth, like someone's shirt, someone's underwear, uh, something that has been in contact with that particular individual. And then you bring in their shirt, you bring in their undergarments, and then they are acted on by the African medicine man. Say, for example, that you have taken in their undergarments, and then they are brought to this African medicine man, they act on them. The effect might be that that other person may in their entire lives never be then able to conceive. And sometimes people don't just bring pieces of cloth. At times they bring maybe hair. You've gone to the barber, you've cut your hair. And this your enemy or someone that once you dealt with then collects remains of your hair and takes them to the African medicine man. And then this practitioner of divination acts on this hair and the result is that something negative then happens to you. They don't just use pieces of cloth or hair. Sometimes they use nail cuttings. Take them to the practitioner, act it on, and then the effect is supposed to be felt on the individual. Nail cuttings, spit, uh, soil on which a person has stepped, where you walk and then someone comes and collects the soil around your footprints, and then they take them to this practitioner of divination. Now this is called contact uh, magic. And whatever it is they do on something that has been in contact with you directly then leads to the same thing happening to this individual who is represented or who has been in contact with such things. I've noted, for example, from an African setting, it is because of such reasons that African people are very careful regarding you know, their nail cuttings, regarding their hair, regarding their urine, regarding when they go to uh, relieve themselves. They cover such because such can be taken and be used for purposes of divination. It is noted that when people cover some of their th these things, it is not just with health reasons in mind. Sometimes they do it so that practitioners or, of divination or people that hate them do not take these things and use them for divination purposes. But magic in terms of its practice also takes two forms. There's what is called white magic. There's what is called black magic. What is white magic? White magic is where someone comes, takes, whether he's using contact or non-contact magic, takes whatever it is that represents you or has been in contact with you and then goes to have it uh, 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 acted on by the practitioner of divination for good purposes. Let's say, for example, so we are talking about white magic now. Let's say, for example, a person wants your hand in marriage. A person wants you to be in a relationship with them. A person wants you as their boss to, pro to, to promote them. They can come to your office, steal something that belongs to you. Your photograph, your tie, your socks, 
your shirt and then takes them to this uh, medicine man. They act on them. If you are their boss, you naturally start treating them with favor. If you are someone they want to marry, you are in inclined to marry them. If you are someone they want you to, uh, they want to be in a relationship with, you, uh, you feel compelled to be in a relationship with, and, uh, with them. So sometimes what magic is, 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 what magic is performed for positive reasons. When someone wants to get something positive, they want to get promoted, they want your hand in marriage, they want to be in a relationship with you, they want you protected, they want you taken care of, so they can then practice what is called white magic. In the farms where I grew up, parents would go to a medicine man, get some things to, to put on their children for purposes of protection. Sometimes a string is put around your hand, a string around your neck, a string around your waist, or sometimes a string around your ankle. And all those things were given for the purpose of protection, and that is called white magic. Sometimes they go, they get a bit of medicine from these practitioners of divination, then they make some razor cuts on people, on, your, on family members' bodies, and then put this uh, special powder from the diviner for protection, for luck, for success, for attraction in love affairs. People do that under the rung of white magic. But magic can also be black, where it's practiced with the intention to harm, the intention to injure, the intention to damage, the intention to kill, the intention to make sure one doesn't give birth, the intention to make sure one doesn't get married, the intention to make sure one doesn't get promoted, the intention to make sure one gets fired, the intention to make sure that one is continually sick, the intention to make sure that one's things never are successful. So when someone is going through such things, sometimes it is because of the acts of practitioners of divination. But magic can also take a different form. It can take what is called personal or communal, communal approach. What is personal approach? The personal approach is where you do it for yourself. It's for an individual. Where you do it for your own protection, for your own success, or for your own dealing with your enemies. It's in that rung, uh, a personal approach to magic. But it can also be communal. communal. You know, when you go to your rural areas, Sometimes you notice that the whole village agreed to protect their village. They've put uh, maybe horns on a specific end of the village. Maybe lion's teeth, crocodile teeth, uh, horns of strong animals, you know, in different places to protect their villages. <coughs> Sometimes in certain communities, they come together and agree to consult a diviner for the purpose of protecting the community. So magic takes different forms. Magic takes different approaches. <coughs> it can be personal or it can be communal. But I need you to note something very interesting. Whether magic is contact or non-contact, <coughs> whether magic is black or white magic, whether magic is personal or non-personal magic, whether magic is to harm or not to harm, even if it is being practiced for positive reasons, it is still a practice that the Lord does not condone. We have been reading in our different episodes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse number 9, going downwards. I'll paraphrase it today. The scripture tells us that all these acts were acts of unorthodox religions of the world. They had nothing to do with the God of Israel. And for that reason, the God of Israel spoke to Israel and said, Thou shalt not consult diviners or necromancers or consulters with the dead. Thou shalt not visit any of these things. Because the nations that you are disposing from uh, Canaan are the ones that were practicing this. And as for you, the Lord has not appointed such for you. So I need to openly say this to us today. That if you are a believer in God, the Lord has not appointed magic as your way either of dealing with your enemies or of uh, 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 luck or success in life. Whether it's black or white magic, I need us to all quickly know that it has its source in Satan. 
<coughs> it has its origins in the evil one. It has nothing to do with the God of heaven. All forms of divination has Satan, have Satan as their source of power. All forms of divination have Satan as their source of, of power. Satan has been a, a deceiver and a liar and a murderer from the beginning. I need to read with you from the book of John, chapter number 8, verse number 44. Our subject, divination. Our focus for the day is magic, which can be contact or non-contact magic, which can be black or white magic, which can be personal or communal uh, magic. Verse 44 of the book of uh, uh, John, chapter number 8. Read together with me on your screen if it is appearing there. Listen to what the Bible reads here. You are of your father, the devil, and the last of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abhorred not in truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For a, he is a liar and the father of it. So the devil has been a liar and a murderer right uh, from the foundations of the world. And all forms of divination have their source and origin in him. And for that reason, the Lord forbids us from following practitioners of divination. Revelation chapter number 12, and I'm going to read with you verse number 9. Listen to what it says. Revelation chapter number 12, and we are reading verse number 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Here's what I want us to or not. Revelation 12, verse number 9, calls Satan the deceiver of the whole world. And the record says he was cast out. But my focus is that we know him as the deceiver. It is him that has deceived people. That when you want blessings, you go to practitioners of divination. It is him that has deceived people. That when you want success, you consult uh, practitioners of divination. It is him that has deceived people. That when you are faced with enemies, you can go and consult diviners and magicians. So all forms of divination have their origins with Satan. For that reason, the Lord does not want you and I to follow any kind of divination. Let me pick a quick case study uh, for you from the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter number 8, verse, chapter number 18, verse 4. So read verse 4, verse 10, and then verse 18 to verse number 22. The subject or the story that we meet in this passage is of a group of prophets that were deceived by this great deceiver called Satan. And because they were deceived, they deceived also those that consulted them. And for that reason, it led to the death of a king. Second Chronicles chapter 18, reading verse number 4. The Bible reads here, And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. So Jehoshaphat is with Ahab, and they are about to go to war. And Jehoshaphat makes a special request. He says, I pray thee, let's inquire of the Lord. Let's hear the word of the Lord. Now we are at verse number 10. Chapter 18, verse number 10. And Zedekiah, the son of Cheniah, had met him horns of iron, and said, Thus says the Lord, With these thou shalt push Syria until they are consumed. So Ahab is advised, Let's consult the Lord. And then he made a decision to consult a diviner. And this diviner was a deceived man called Zedekiah who was leading a company of 400 other prophets. Now, let's note the sequence here. The 400 prophets are deceived because they are being led by a man who is deceived, known as Zedekiah. Zedekiah is deceived because he's getting his power and information from the devil who is a deceiver. So it starts from the devil, a deceiver, to Zedekiah, the senior prophet, a deceived man. And he, then he deceives 400 other prophets. 
and these 400 prophets then deceive Ahab. And the result is that Ahab then dies. So the Lord says to us, we must not consult diviners because the source of their power is the devil himself. Let's go again to the same chapter, verse 18 to verse number 22. And he said, therefore, the, therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord. Now, this is the true prophet of God now speaking. And he's showing us what had happened for Zedekiah to see this false vision. And he said, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne and the host of heaven standing on his right and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spake after this manner, and another after that manner. Then came out a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? Listen to verse 21. And he said, I will go and be a lying spirit, in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt entice him. Now the record here that Micaiah is giving us is a picture of what is happening in heaven where Ahab is about to go to war and the spirit comes before the Lord and says, I'm going to deceive him by being a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. So when Ahab consulted the prophets, they told him information from a toxic and deceived source. And for that reason, fast forward, Ahab died because he consulted a diviner. I need us to know, my brothers and my sisters, whether for positive reasons or for negative reasons, we are not to consult diviners in any way because the source of all divination powers is a defiled source. It is the deceiver and the devil himself. Now, we have so many passages in which the Lord talks to us against practitioners of divination. We may not be able to look at all of them, but I'll pick just a few for our learning today. You know, in reproving the church at Thyatira, God showed his displeasure in that his institution, the church, had tolerated Jezebel, who called herself a prophetess, but was a false prophetess and a diviner. Maybe let's read Revelation chapter 2, verse 20, and verse number 22, verse number 23. Listen to what the Lord says to the church at Thyatira, verse number 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, and except they repent of their deeds. Verse 23. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and the heart, and I will give unto every one of you according to to your works. What is it the Lord had against the church at Thyatira? Verse 20, the record says, they tolerated Jezebel who called herself a prophetess. Now when you go to 2 Kings chapter 9, verse number 22, we will not read it in the interest of time, Jezebel called herself a prophetess. And the church at Thyatira were told, you tolerate a person who has a false doctrine. For that reason, I am against you. And the same message comes to us today. The Lord will separate himself from us. If we tolerate practices of divination among us, if we tolerate those that practice divination among us, the Lord will separate himself from us. I need to also let you know that divination, that magic that we're talking about, while it is found outside the church mostly, it is also found within the church where it is happening in African-initiated churches, known as mapostories by many, where you go and you are given strings, where you go and you are given things, emulates, things to put around your body. It is also quite common and prevalent in Pentecostal churches, where you go and you are given oil, where you go and you are given anointed towels, 
where you go and you are given this and that that has been prayed for. Where you go and you are told, bring a picture of the person you want to marry. Bring something that has been in contact with your, with your enemy. So it is not only happening in those circles outside the church. It is also quite prevalent within the church. Most of these celebrity uh, uh, Pentecostal prophets are practitioners of divination. And so the same message that God was giving to the church at Thyatira regarding Jezebel, he's also giving it to us regarding these celebrity prophets, regarding these other prophets that practice under trees and different places. They are practitioners of divination. And from such, the record from Scripture says, turn away. It is my prayer, brethren, that the Lord will save you from the practice and act of divination. It is my prayer you will keep yourself from African medicine man. It is my prayer you will keep yourself from these celebrity prophets. It is my prayer you will keep yourself from these prophets that practice under trees. I think in our next episode, we need to pick a few examples from the celebrity prophets and the other African initiated prophets so that we see these practices that are directly condemned by the word of God. May the Lord keep you safe from divination whether magic practiced for good reasons or practiced for bad reasons. The Lord doesn't want us to do that. He wants to be with us, and he wants us to trust fully and only in him so that he may save us in our situations, and he may bless us when we need a blessing. May the good Lord watch over you and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for our discussion on divination. May your blessing continue to be our portion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.